Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to EECS 2030. I'm Jackie, your instructor uh, for both section B and section E. And uh, in this session here, we will not cover anything substantial uh, about your lecture material. It's been released for week number one already. I have already uh, sent out a few uh, announcements on the E-class. Hopefully you have been receiving them. That's why you can join the session today. But today the main focus is really to go over uh, at a high level how the course is going to be run. I have a, one version of the course syllabus already released on the E-class and also on the lecture side. I'll show them to you. And then I need to go over that in complete details with you just to make sure you're okay. I call it preliminary because uh, York uh, only requires the marking scheme to be finalized at the end of the second week. So I would say the information I put on the syllabus, the majority of them will stay the same uh, throughout the course. But if there's any minor changes I have to make, I will let you know explicitly. All right, let me now start with the uh, uh, the presentation. And then if there's any, uh, I would try to monitor the chat as often as I can. But I would say the best way for you to ask questions would be just interrupt me. I definitely don't mind, okay? Feel free to interrupt me. Just open your mic and interrupt me if you got any questions. All right, so just about myself very quickly, uh, how made you call me? So I would say just call me Jackie. I'm not very formal in terms of being called. You can call me Professor Jackie, Professor, Professor Wong, and as long as you remain courtesy, uh, I think that'll be okay, right? Jackie is most preferred. And whenever you need any advice on the course, you should really speak to me, uh, either during my office hour, or you can make a suggestion during the Q&A. Uh, that's really the best way uh, to really get my advice. And throughout the semester, if there's any way you think uh, the teaching uh, can be done a little bit more to help your learning, please also let me know. So that's uh, something I would like to mention always, you really want to uh, speak to me at the earliest possible chance rather than when it's too late, okay? Okay, uh, for those of you who may not have been enrolled in the course officially, you might be in the waiting list or maybe you're thinking about taking the course, I would say you have to send me an email. You can find my email in the uh, my department homepage, which I'll show to you in a moment. You need to give me your name, your student number, your passport, your ID, so I can add you to, uh, the access to the uh, e-class so that you can uh, get access to the uh, lab materials. And for those of you who have may have um, who may who may not have been uh, officially registered, it is assumed you will keep up with the lectures and the tutorials because there will be no extension on the uh, labs and tests, just to be fair uh, with other fellow students who actually complete their materials in time, okay? So what about writing your email to, to myself? I would say I'm quite happy to help you learn as a colleague, right? And you, you can think of me like that. So formality is definitely unnecessary. However, courtesy is uh, actually expected. So you can read it, uh, you can read this example here. So I would say when you write an email to me because we are running this class remotely. So email might be the best way uh, to get something quick, uh, quick feedback from me or just, uh, just attend my office hour. So this email is pretty rude. On the other hand, this will be much nicer. You don't need to be so polite, but at least uh, write to me almost like uh, when you write uh, writing to your friend. So I think yeah, that'll be acceptable. Okay, what about course information? There are two sites you have to uh, check almost on a daily basis, or well, sometimes maybe a few times uh, during the day, two, uh, two sites. One is the single E-class site. I'm teaching section B and section E. And at the moment we have about 320 something students uh, in both sections. So I think uh, the best way to really coordinate uh, the two sections is to have a single E-class site. And then uh, what can you find, uh, find in that particular E-class site? Uh, I'm pretty sure all of you already got access to it, right? Let me just click on that so that remains handy. Let me just wait for that to load. Okay, while well, it is slow, uh, still loading. So what can you find in the eClass site? You can find the course syllabus. You can find the uh, announcement, which I'll try to make uh, whenever necessary. So. And also the course forum, I will open the course forum uh, later today. So you can ask any questions related to lectures or tutorials or uh, any course materials actually uh, on the forum. I will try to moderate the uh, forum myself as well. And uh, the instructions for your laboratory exercises will be posted on the uh, e-class. However, when you make a submission, like for your lab zero part one, I uh, make an early announcement yesterday for lab zero part one and for all the subsequent labs, the way you submit for the labs 
is going to be through the web submit interface rather than eClass. Okay, just notice that, right? And for your programming tests, which well, I will speak more uh, in, in more details, both the instructions and the submission will be through the eClass, both of them, okay? And for written tests, also it will be done on eClass as well. And also we have some uh, one comprehensive exam at the end of the semester. And the date of your exam is going to be scheduled by the register office. As soon as I know about the dates and time, I'll let you know. Okay, so that's something we'll uh, need to work on. And check your emails regularly. That's really important, okay? Okay, it's loading pretty slowly on my page. Okay, so I'll get back there, maybe a little bit later, okay. Okay, what about the required study materials? Okay, um, so this is the site uh, that you also have to check very regularly on a, uh, also uh, not necessarily on a week, uh, daily basis, but I'll update that at least once a week whenever I update any new materials for you to study. So if I click on that, so this is my, uh, the 2030 uh, section B and section E, right? You may have seen this site already. I have been uh, uh, citing that reference for many times already up to now. Okay, I will go over the materials over here in just a moment, but uh, that's the site you also go to, to download the slides, to uh, get to the recording for the lecture, and also get to the recording uh, for the Q&A. That's uh, where you should go to, okay? I'll go over a little bit more detail in the, uh, uh, on this site later. And also course syllabus is also there. You can see the course syllabus is actually here. Oh, thank you to, for telling me, since like the E-class is working very slowly on, uh, uh, not just me. Okay, that's okay. I don't think we need to see the E-class. So I would say, yeah, we have to bear with uh, if there's any slowdown for the E-class throughout the semester. If there's anything uh, I can do to help that, I'll, I'll let you know. Anyway, so thanks for telling me. Good. Okay. And Let's now go over the course syllabus uh, uh, in detail, okay? And for you to download the course syllabus, you can either download it, uh, maybe for now it's the easiest way. So how, how can you get to, uh, get to this site? Let me show it to you. Go to my homepage, www.ecs.yorkview.ca forward slash Telda Jackie, right? Go to my homepage and go under, uh, go under lectures and go under 2021 and then fall, go to 2030. Okay, that's a public domain. You don't need any uh, login for that. And then you will see under the lectures section here, you have the course syllabus. And that's, a, that's the PDF you can download, all right? Okay. Yeah, actually, yeah. Yeah, if the e-class is pretty slow, then if your colleagues uh, actually show up late, uh, they may not be able to uh, get access to the links. That, anyway, that's, uh, it's, been, uh, it's been recorded anyway. Okay, let's now go over the syllabus, okay? See that? Okay, there's a PDF. And the syllabus is going to be applicable to both section B and section E, okay? The two sections will be taught in the same way. So there'll be, there'll be no inconsistency, okay? And we'll go for a section by section with you. Uh, if there's any section, I think you can just read it by yourself. I will save your time, okay? Okay, what about course policies? Okay. Yeah, and for those of you who will show up late, don't worry about it. You know, I think the session has been recorded. You can definitely re review it for the missing part. Okay, so now we let's go over the course syllabus. So what will be the course policy? Number one, we want, want you to watch out for any potential chance of being caught for plagiarism. Let me just uh, tell you explicitly in the beginning of the course. So we are, we are talking about for all your laboratory, uh, all your uh, lab assignments, and also for your programming tests, in which case you're going to, de uh, to develop some Java projects on Eclipse and then submit it for grading. For both of them, they are supposed to be solely your own work. No collaboration is, uh, can be allowed, okay? It's a very important. And it will be considered a violation of academic integrity if we found any suspicious similarity between pairs of uh, submitted work, in which case we will actually report to Lasan. Okay, and uh, if you, uh, for those of you who actually took a 1022 with me, uh, you will know that I'm quite serious about, uh, you know, the academic integrity for your for your work. So if, please just stick to the policy that you will just be fine. Just focus on your learning. Okay, you can read the full description uh, for plagiarism. And also for uh, submission and assessment. 
Uh, this is still a, an, a completely online delivery for the course. So we have to, we have some stringent deadline that's been set uh, on the uh, uh, for your lab assignment. So for your, uh, let's say for the tests, either programming test or written test, they will be set with uh, some stringent starting time and also ending time. So that's something I will go over when I get to the calendar section for the syllabus. Just keep that in mind. Always pay attention to the, uh, the time. And the time that I uh, mentioned in the uh, syllabus, they are all the Eastern Toronto time is the EST time zone. So for those of you who might be in a different time zone, it will be your responsibility to actually uh, convert the time zone yourself. All right. Okay, and then if there's any uh, potential issue you think you might have for the internet, you're also responsible for taking some uh, proactive steps to actually try to fix it. If you really got trouble with the internet, uh, that's really beyond your control. In that case, you're uh, also expected to contact me as soon as possible. So maybe I can find some help resources for you, All right? And no teamwork for laboratory exercises and for written tests and for programming tests, they ought to be done individually ought to be done individually. So there's no collaboration uh, uh, allowed. If you do that, you might be caught uh, for plagiarism. And just about late enrollments, okay? For those of you who are, are not officially registered in the course, uh, in that case, you will have to uh, send me an email within, the, uh, within week one, uh, which I just mentioned in the slides, right? Gonna send me your email uh, name and also Passport York ID so I can uh, give you access to the e-class. So far, any questions? Let me take a look to see if we got any new question on the chat. Do we, uh, will we be able to give uh, labs in person? No, actually so far there's no such plan. So all the labs are going to be over, uh, going to be held by the TA, more like an office hour over the Zoom. So there'll be no, uh, so there'll be no uh, uh, in-person uh, delivery for the labs, okay? Oh, guys, are you, are you able to hear me okay? No. Your video is bad. Oh, the, is it, uh, the audio is bad? Uh, sometimes it's cutting kind of off a little bit. Oh, it yeah, froze a little bit. Really okay, well, I, I do apologize for that. Uh, my internet could be, there might be some uh, connection issue here. How about now? Is it better right now? It's it's yeah, right now. now it's fine. Yeah. Right? Okay, so do, uh, yeah, bear with me. I think, uh, I'm not sure exactly what might be the reason. Um, anyway, so I can tell you that at least uh, the entire session has been recorded locally on, on into my computer. So it's definitely uh, sounds okay. But anyway, so if you uh, kind of missed this uh, critical part because I was frozen, please just interrupt me. I can uh, say that again. That's uh, the best uh, we could do for now. All right. All right, let's, uh, let me now continue uh, with the syllabus, okay? Okay, uh, about academic integrity, let me just say one more thing and then I'll, I can let you read the, uh, the syllabus over here. So in order, uh, in order for you to protect yourself, right? You really want to avoid doing the following, okay? You don't really want to discuss the code level details with your uh, colleagues. For example, if you guys maybe have some channel that you want to share some study tips, that's absolutely fine. But when you actually uh, discuss anything about the assignments or uh, for lab assignment, you definitely cannot discuss any code level details. It's really important to notice, okay? And you don't want to discuss any concrete steps, in which case you might just end up having similar code as others. That will be beyond reasonable level. And also you definitely don't want to share any code. And also, uh, let me see here. Um, yeah, so the best way you can help your fellow student will be, you can help them clarify the instructions or you can actually help them how to use the breakpoints and debugger on the uh, Eclipse IDE. So that's something I would recommend you do to help your fellow students. That'll be the best way, all right? And then also for written tests and also programming tests, they're also subject to academic integrity policy. So for that part, I'm gonna let you read the syllabus, right? I will assume everybody has read the policy before they start doing the test or the assignment, okay? Am I still frozen? Just now. Oh, you know what? You know what? Um, 
there may not be anything I can do at the moment. Uh, yeah, you know, maybe the best way is for me to restart my wire, uh, wireless router. Maybe that's something I can do, but maybe not during this uh, Q&A session, okay? Um, turn off the video. I can try. I can try to do that. Okay, let's, uh, let's see if this might help, okay? And now I already turn off my video, all right? Okay, so let me just try another few minutes and then I will see uh, if that's okay for you. Okay, so this is about academic honesty policy for the course. So please uh, make sure you read the syllabus and stick to it, all right? Better for now? Okay, hopefully that's gonna be best, uh, much better from now on, yeah. All right, and uh, once uh, about my office hour. So if you wanna speak to me in person, uh, for now I schedule uh, three, uh, three hours of office hour uh, every week. But if, you, uh, if uh, none of them actually work for you or you need some extra uh, attention from me, just send me an email. We can uh, definitely set up some appointments, okay? For now, it's gonna be three to 4 p.m. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, starting from today. So if you actually got any questions related to the course, you can speak to me today. So how can you find the, uh, the, the, the office hour Zoom link? So if you go to uh, over here, if you go to the 2030 lectures page over here, you will see click here to access. Okay, so here will be Zoom office hour only, right? If you click on that, you can uh, just, uh, you can attend my meeting room and then we can talk, right? During the scheduled office hour, okay? All right. Uh, someone was asking if the record where the recording will be made available. Okay, let me just uh, mention quickly. Uh, hopefully now my sound quality is much better. I really hope. And if you miss some beginning part, I would say uh, you can simply just uh, check back later. I will actually make an announcement later today. Go back to the 2030 uh, website and then you will see syllabus Q&A on September 8th and there's a YouTube link, it will be uh, active after uh, sometime after today. So that's where you can uh, find a recording. You don't need to go to e-class for the recording, okay? Okay, and then let me now go on to uh, the later part of the syllabus. And for the study materials, this will be the site I just showed to you, okay? That's really important, this will be the site. Okay, 2030, 421. Let me talk about for week number one, what you're supposed to do quickly. And then I'll go over other things uh, in the syllabus. Once you go to the lecture site for 2030, 421, you will see I already posted the material for week one. Well, basically I said for week one and week two, we don't have any uh, recorded lectures to actually uh, to go over. However, you're required to study review tutorials on Java, right? So what you gotta do is, I would suggest you start with this introduction video, which, which takes about 15 minutes. That will actually guide you through all the items you are supposed to work. And then you can click on this uh, tutorial video playlist. And if you click on that, you will see uh, all the videos you're supposed to finish for this week. And then you will need to make a submission after this, right? If you go to the e-class, you also see the PDF instruction for your lab zero part one, right? That's more or less what you're gonna do for week number one. Questions about the attendance for the Q&A, for the lecture, for the labs, bear with me, I will get there, all right? There's a valid question, but not yet. Well, I just wanna go uh, just with my uh, plan over here, okay? We'll definitely go there, okay? So guys, uh, is my sound quality okay now? Hopefully, much better? Yeah, it's right now it's Okay, fine. thank you, I I'm relieved. Okay, so tip, don't show your video. Okay, I will try. Okay, so now, what about for this course, uh, we got many means for you to get help. Okay, let me just go over that. Definitely, uh, if you prefer to maybe write uh, your, uh, your questions, you can definitely post to the course forum, okay? Uh, since the e-class may be down, so maybe I wouldn't show the course forum, but uh, as soon as it is open, I will um, refer you to the course forum. You can definitely post questions there, but just remember on the course forum, you, are, you can ask questions, but you're not supposed to give out solution to your colleagues, right? I will be moderating the uh, forum myself. So there's a certain policy you have to read before you actually uh, post anything on the forum. So hopefully that's understandable. And also I got office hour, which I just mentioned. And for today, specifically 3 p.m., you can drop by my office hour. 
okay, on a Zoom. And for the schedule lab session, okay, so I'm gonna show you the exact schedule, but you can think about since we got section B and section E completely coordinated. So there are five different time intervals for the schedule lab and TAs will be able to cover each one of them. So for you, doesn't matter if you're registered in which section, you can go to either uh, one or all of them for all the schedule lab session to ask question. We don't take attendance for schedule lab. Okay, that's the principle. And for the weekly Q&A session over here, uh, that's gonna be helped by myself. I will make available some Google Doc for you to post questions related to the lecture material for the, uh, for the previous week. And then during the Q&A session, I will try to go over all the questions on the Google Doc. And for those of you who actually show up, I can also ask you about if you got any uh, new question. And then attendance, if you really ask me, I would say that's optional. If you really find that you don't need it, or you just want to watch recording without having some interaction with me over Zoom, that's okay. You can just watch a recording, right? Uh, that's uh, just the way it is. And do we have an option for in-person labs? As I mentioned before, no, actually this semester. So everything's gonna be delivered online. Uh, since for EECS classes, uh, they're usually above the uh, cap size that's actually set by the uh, university. So we cannot have any in-person labs. Not, not really. If there's any change on this policy, I'll let you know. I know some of, uh, maybe many of you really want to have some in-person interaction with either the TA or myself, but currently we don't have such a plan. Yeah, so safety uh, is still something we have to make sure it is okay before we do it, all right? Okay, for prerequisite, I'm pretty sure every one of you already finished the prerequisite. I don't need to bother you with that. And course description, you can read it. It doesn't make sense to talk about it right now. Uh, we will actually, I'll keep reminding you, uh, reminding you where we are in the course. However, for course learning outcomes, I want to spend a little bit of time on this quickly, okay? So roughly speaking, these will be the topics that we will cover uh, throughout the course, which is about advanced OOP in Java. So here, application programming interface together with the implementation. So basically what we're gonna do is we want you to implement classes and also methods. That's something we want you to implement based on J unit tests. And you will see that, uh, you will see exactly what I really meant by going over part one and part two for the review tutorial series, okay? Uh, all the slides on your website or the e-class, you will be on my website, not the e-class. You can think about, you only go to the e-class either for instruction of, of those labs, or you go there to take your programming test or written test or later for the exam. All the study materials will be posted on my website. All right. So guys, please don't be shy. Shoot to me the questions, right? It's really uh, meant to, we, we are meant to do this uh, for the first session. And for document and implementation, we'll, uh, we'll try to show you something called Java doc, which is a pretty simple mechanism to have a better uh, documentation. We'll get there uh, later in the course. Okay, and then we we'll talk about aggregation versus composition. And I'm pretty sure in your first year, you have learned about a concept for OOP called aliasing. Okay, in case you forgot about what it is, you may want to recall yourself by reviewing your notes, but it will be covered by part two of the uh, our review tutorial series uh, next week aliasing, okay? We'll get there. And I would say inheritance is really the most important thing I would like you to take away from this course since we talk about advanced OOP stuff. So inheritance is really something I will spend a lot of time on after the reading week. Before the reading week, I still need to cover some basics and other more advanced topics, but inheritance is gonna come after the reading week. And then we're gonna see uh, the complete story about inheritance. What's, uh, what does it really mean for static type versus dynamic type, polymorphism, dynamic binding, and typecasting, and also generics. Many uh, interesting topics uh, to cover. And we're also going to talk, talk about recursion. And if time permitted, I would really like to cover a little bit about linked lists uh, this term. So these will be a very good preparation for EECS 2011. 
So for those of you who might be planning to take 2011, well, actually you have to take it because it's a mandatory course. But if you want to take it next term, I will be teaching that again. So for those of you who might be in my both classes, I want to give you some little advantage so you can see the consistency, all right? Anyway, and um, for these two learning outcomes, if time permitted, I'll try to cover that. If no, then we might have to skip them. But I think, again, this uh, topic about inheritance is the most important one I would like you to take away after the reading week. Okay. Guys, any questions so far? Okay. And let's now, okay, let's talk about grading scheme. What's going to be uh, the grading uh, criteria for you for this course? Okay. We're going to have uh, for lab zero, we have part one and part two. Part one will be done this week in week number one. Part two will be done next week for week number two. Okay, so these are the two parts. 1.25% each. In total, we got 2.5%, all right? And then we got another five labs, and also it will be 2.5% each. So we got 12.5. That is, for all the laboratory exercises you have, you're going to get 15% uh, in total. That's what you will get, okay? And then we also got programming tests, uh, in which case you will be given some maybe skeleton code or given some instruction, and then you have developed uh, Java code from scratch. And I will give you a precise instruction and preparation guide uh, in the due time, okay? Now we have uh, three programming tests. For the first one, I will make it lighter because you maybe you're uh, still getting used to taking a programming test. But for the next two, it will be 10% each, okay? So in total, we got 27% for the three programming tests. And also we got a written test. A written test will be done on the E-class and it will be 6% each, 18%. Finally, we got a final exam, which is comprehensive, meaning that it's gonna cover from day one until the last day of the material. And that one will be 40% and 58% in total. So that's about the grading scheme. Uh, you might have more questions about the formats and also exactly when, what time, will the uh, programming test and written test take place? That's something I will speak about as well. And also what will be the deadline for lab submission? I will also cover that in the syllabus, okay? Okay, in case you're wondering about, does it really matter whether you're registered in section B or section E? It does not matter. Everything will be coordinated. So everything will be the same. Maybe when you're taking the programming test or written test, it may be a different version of the test, but the level of difficulty is ensured to be the same. Right, so you don't need to worry. But for the labs, you will be submitting uh, the same lab. Doesn't matter which section you are. On the other hand, in case you want to switch to section A or section C, I uh, hopefully not. But if you, in case you decide to do that, it's a completely different way of running the course. Maybe this, uh, maybe after all the same topics will be covered, but just the way uh, things are evaluated and also the things lecture materials are organized might be different. It's simply just another instructor. So I want to give you some heads up for this. What about the expected weekly workload about how many hours you should really spend? I just followed the uh, Lassonde's recommendation, uh, which I think and more or less is reasonable. So uh, Lassonde's recommendation is, for every credits of the course, you need to spend three to 4.5 hours. Meaning that for this course, 2030 is three credits. So the expected workload every week is between nine to 13.5 hours. And here we are talking about average students. So you definitely don't feel bad if you have to take much more than this. Maybe that's possible, but I would just say for average students, it uh, should take about between nine and 13.5 hours. And the uh, nine and 30.5 hours is actually, uh, it's gonna cover all the lecture materials and everything, all right? So let me tell you the one that's really pretty much fixed. For the lecture, uh, lecture videos, they will be recorded and then they will take about three hours each week. That's kind of lecture time. And then the remaining part will be between six to 10.5 hours, it will be up to you to actually study for the tests or to actually complete the assignments. For the very first two weeks, for week number one and also week number two, specifically, we don't have any schedule left for you. Okay, as, uh, for week, uh, let, let me just say uh, more precisely. For week number one, no schedule lab. It is simply just self-guided. 
you you already you have been given the uh, instruction for lab zero part one already. So that's something you can simply follow through yourself. If you got trouble, you can just drop by my office hour. We only start to have TA in the schedule lab session from week two. Okay, for week number one, uh, there will be about four hours of tutorial videos you have to study. So that's the, the number of hours you are expected to, to spend. Maybe you will, you will spend a little bit more to maybe pause the video and maybe to go over some parts in more detail. That's kind of up to you, but at least you should spend at least four hours for the first week, okay? And for week number two, there will be schedule labs, okay? In which case, you can definitely ask TA some questions if you wish, okay? And again, you can attend any of the lab sessions. They're optional attendance. It's really to your benefits, okay? And the current week is already considered as week one. You will see in the calendar. So th this semester is somehow funny. So the week starts from a Wednesday. So today is day one of the semester. You should think about week one will be from today, the Wednesday, until the end of next Tuesday, right? You will see that in the calendar, okay? But today is week one, not week zero, all right? All right, uh, one more thing to mention. So this course is really foundational because you do need an advanced OOP uh, concept in order to uh, get succeeded in uh, the subsequent courses like a 20, uh, 2011 or maybe 3311 for uh, software design. So I would say it would not be surprising if you find yourself needing needing to actually uh, spend more time on the course materials. That's our, that's kind of expected, all right? Any question so far? Anybody? Everyone's okay? Okay. Uh, I, I yes, please go ahead. Um, so I took the EECS 1, uh, 1022 with you. And uh, I think it was the same format as this with uh, pre-recorded lectures. Uh -huh. my, my question is, will there also be pre-recorded Java tutorial videos? Okay, very uh, good like question. Never last time? I got it, thank you. Yeah, so the question was, uh, apparently you're, you took uh, the 1022 with me uh, back in the winter. So you're wondering if it will be the same format. Okay, let me just clarify this, okay. For 2030, both section B and section E. Okay, so what, uh, what will be the weekly materials you have to study? Pre-recorded videos, pre-recorded lectures. And it's about three hours. That's the principle. The only exception, the only exception is the week one and week two. Okay, for week number one and week number two, for these two weeks, we actually got, each week we got four hours of tutorial videos, but no lectures, right? It, it seems like you're trying to make a separation between either lectures or tutorials, right? I'm telling you for week number one and two, you only got tutorial videos to follow just for review purpose for the OOP. Okay, starting from week number three all the way to week number 12, you don't have any uh, tutorial videos alongside. No, you only got the pre-recorded lectures. Okay, does that answer your question? Uh, yes, thank you so much. Okay, no problem, yeah. Okay, and one question from Saha, and we should be watching the pre-recorded lectures before the Q&A, right? I would say yes, it's a highly recommended, definitely. Because if you already attend a q and A, I I think uh, uh, if you want to gain the most out of it, you better have some very good sense about what's being talked about in that particular lecture. So please try, try your best to finish watching all the re uh, recorded lecture before the Q&A. That's highly recommended for sure. All right, let me now go back to the syllabus and then let me uh, go on, okay? And I'll talk more about the uh, global picture for the, uh, the, the calendar in just a moment, okay? And about how your letter grades are going to be calculated. Again, I'm just following the standard for York. Eventually, what you will be getting is the letter grade. And A+, plus, for example, A+, plus roughly correspond to 90% or higher. And A correspond to 80% or higher and et cetera, right? You should be very familiar with the standard at York. And 
we are going to get row mark score for every uh, assessment, either lab or programming test or written test, right? You're gonna get a row mark score. And then eventually what we will do is we'll do a standard calculation for the weighted sum, right? That's what we're gonna do. And then here is one example about how the math can be done in a simplistic uh, scenario. You can go over that. I'm not gonna bother you, uh, bother you with that. If you got any uh, concern about how the letter grade is, should be calculated, you can get back to me, but it should be no surprise to you, all right? Okay, so now it's important to talk about the course calendar, okay? Uh, let me just tell you this. You can definitely get a larger version of this. Simply go back to the lecture site, right? Uh, my site. And then you will see semester calendar over here. If you click on that, so this is the calendar I'm going to go over right now. So you can also get access to it. Okay, let me go over that. Okay, here. Okay, glow, uh, on the, the big picture is we got week one right now. You can see we're starting from here, week one, all the way to week uh, 13. The reason that we got 13 is because the reading, uh, we also got reading week over here. That's why I'm counting that, right? Oh, sorry, let me say that again. We got a reading week over here. And then before the reading week, we got five weeks. Keeps going. Sorry, uh, some question here? Oh, okay. So we got a reading week over here in the middle. And before that, we got five weeks. After that, we got another seven weeks. And then we got the exam period between December 9th and December 23rd. Okay, that's the uh, according to the register office. And there's uh, many information. Uh, let me tell you the information you should really know. Okay, let's go over the lecture material first of all. For week one and week two, as I said before, there will be no pre recorded lectures. Instead, you only follow tutorials for review. So, Lab Zero Part One is supposed to be released today, but I re already released that yesterday. All right. And next Wednesday, you will you can expect the release of your lab zero part two, which will be the part two for the tutorial series. Um, Question. Um, it's lagging again. It's lagging, uh, it's lagging. lagging again. <laughs> okay. And uh, wow. Well, uh, from when? Uh, from when? <laughs> Since uh, for like okay. one minute or something. One minute or something. Okay. Like, yeah, like um lab zero like when you released it and stuff okay yeah uh yeah so okay let me try it again all right maybe i shouldn't speak so fast maybe that will help okay so um you're still lagging okay let's try let's try okay let's try and uh okay let me try again for this week uh lab zero part one is already released and for next week is going to be lab zero part two okay and then uh, for all the subsequent lectures, starting from week number three, you can see it will typically be released on Monday. So week three lecture here, week four lecture here, and week five lecture here. And for example, after week three lecture here is released, you will have the entire week all the way until the next Wednesday and Thursday to attend a Q&A to ask questions. All right, so that's why you can see release of week number three. And then in the next week, we got a Q&A for week, week three. So you got more than one, uh, slightly more than one week uh, for you to watch the video. So please, I, I'm pretty sure uh, towards the middle of the semester, you'll become very, very busy with other coursework. So what I can say is I will release everything on, uh, on time, but you should really try to do your part as well. Try to watch them before the Q&A if you want to attend them. Okay, good. That's about the uh, uh, Q&A. Uh, so the, your very first Q&A will be next Wednesday, okay? Uh, let me just uh, use a different color. Next Wednesday, September 15 and 16, it will be the Q&A for Lab Zero Part 1. So if you got any questions related to the slides, related to the written notes, related to the tutorial videos, what you should do is, let's go back to here. And then if you go back to the lecture site, you will see under here, you can post your questions in this document. If you click on that, it will show you some Google Doc. Okay, so you can post questions there. That's something I will try to collect. I will try to organize maybe the day before the Q&A so I can get more organized during the session, all right? But if you simply just want to come here unprepared and just listen, that's fine too. You're also welcome. It's really the time made for you. So if you can show up, I'll be happy. Not required. 
all right, so that's about, um, and then let's talk about the lab, okay? About the release for the lab. Only for lab zero part one here, and also lab zero part two, they will be released on the Wednesday, only these two, okay? Starting from lab number two, they will be released on Friday. Lab, uh, lab two over here, uh, lab three over here, also Friday, lab four over here, and also lab five over here, okay? And then typically you will be given about two weeks uh, for your lab exercises uh, before the submission. The only exception, the only exception is uh, lab number one. So here you can see lab number one, according to the calendar, it will be released on September 22nd over here. Oh, sorry. I'm losing the connection of my Apple Pencil. Just bear with me. Okay. Yeah. So lab number one, uh, let me just go back there. Lab, one, uh, lab number one will be released uh, next Wednesday, September 22nd. It will be due in about 10 days on the Friday of October 1st. That's something I want to uh, just uh, uh, give you some heads up quickly, okay? Other, otherwise, you can see for every lab in the semester, you will always be given uh, two weeks, right? Lab two, lab three, lab four, and lab five, all right? Guys, any question about reading the calendar so far? about reading when the lectures are released, about when the Q&As are held, and also about uh, when the uh, labs will be released or due. Any questions so far? Hi, Professor, I have a quick question. Go ahead, please. So I'm from section, section B. Yeah. So I checked my calendar, like we have, we are supposed to have lectures on Wednesday and Monday, but yeah. as I can see from this calendar, we have no lectures on Monday. Yes, good question. Let me get to that right away. Yeah, I think it might be uh, wise to cover that. Thank you. Okay, right. So I think again, since uh, I'm designing this uh, schedule for the course because it's completely online. So based on my experience, this might be the one to give everybody the most flexibility. So we don't really need to have synchronous lecture to, to meet every Monday, Wednesday for session B and every Tuesday, Thursday for session E. So what we will, uh, what we will do instead is like this, okay? So now, if you are in section B or in session E, it doesn't matter. We got two Q and A session every week. One will be here, Wednesday, 11.30 to one, the current session. Thursday from 1 p.m. to 2.30 and you can attend either or both or none. It's completely up to you, okay? It doesn't matter, we don't take attendance. So you can attend this or you can attend that. You can attend both or you can choose to skip them both if you don't find a need, all right? That's, not, uh, that's for the lecture. And so the original schedule for Monday and Tuesday lecture that simply just cancel because we already uh, released a pre-recorded lecture to you on, on, on Monday. So we don't need to meet uh, on Monday and Tuesday. We don't need to. Okay, that's number one. Number two, what about a schedule lab? Again, schedule lab are completely optional. It's really for the TA to stay uh, stand by there and then uh, answer your question if you got any, okay? And to really uh, give you the most benefits, uh, we got in total one, two, three, four, and five. We got five different intervals uh, between section B and section E. So I just make them, just call, I just call them 2030 B and E, meaning that either you're from section B or section E, doesn't matter. Just, uh, you can attend if you wish. And then you get, it's gonna be the TA Q and A. So it's gonna be one-on-one -on -one with the TA. And it will be optional. So for example, if you're officially registered for this section for the lab, you can definitely apply, uh, attend that. You can choose to miss it, or you can choose to attend others as well. It's completely up to you, okay? And also for the Zoom office hour, uh, that's mine. So that'll be three to 4 p.m. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, okay? For those of you who might be in a different time zone, if you find some other time might be better for, uh, for you to speak with me, just reach out to me by email and then we can set some appointment, okay? Okay, I hope that's clear about the uh, schedule lecture, uh, about the Q&A and also for the uh, um, schedule labs. Okay, good. 
no live lecture, that's correct. All the lecture materials will be pre-recorded and you can study them at your own pace. They will be live Q&A, okay? Just to make it clear. Let me just go back to the calendar. I think there's another thing I, will, I need to mention quickly about the calendar, okay, here. Let me go back there. And the next thing to really emphasize, let me just clean that a little bit, if I may. Okay, what about test? So for written tests and also for uh, programming tests, the schedule will be, uh, you can think about your very first test will be the written test. It will be on Friday, October 1st. And your very first programming test will be the week after. It will be on Friday, October 8th. All right, the way it's gonna work for both the written test and the programming test is actually specified precisely on the syllabus. I'll let you read it, but I'll mention that here, okay? The way it's gonna work is like this. So we talk about written tests. Let's take the written test, for example, right? So it's going to take place on a Friday, right? We got three written tests, uh, in total. So that means there will be three Fridays that you have to take the written test. Let's say on a particular one, right? It's going to be on Friday. And I will open the submission on eClass from 8 a.m. Eastern time. The submission will be closed at 8 p.m. Eastern time, 12 hours uh, window. And then your job is to have a single attempt of the written test for about 20 minutes. So for example, I might simply choose this particular part over here for 20 minutes. As soon as you tell the e-class that you want to start the attempt, you will be timed for 20 minutes. Okay, so that's uh, how the written test is gonna work. For 20 minutes, I can choose any of the 20 minutes window within this 12 hour period. So that's for the written test. What about programming test in a consistent way? If we talk about the programming test, it's also going to take place on a Friday for sure. Of course, you can look up uh, on the calendar which Friday it is. Let's say uh, on a particular Friday, you're supposed to get a programming test. What's gonna happen is rather than choosing a 20 minutes block, you're gonna choose a 90 minutes block for the programming test, okay? So like a 90 minutes, for example. So the written test will take, will last for 20 minutes for a single attempt. And for the programming test, you will take for 90 minutes, one and a half hour. So guys, is that clear to you about how the programming test and written test are going to be run? Is it clear? If you got any question, now will be the time to yes, ask. Yes, the is gone. Oh, I'm gone again. So, okay. So did you guys uh, get this part here? We got the 20 minutes. Oh, got the 10 minutes. Okay, good. 20 minutes. Uh -huh. So maybe, okay, you got a 20 minutes one. 20 minutes is for the written test. For programming test, it's also going to take place on a Friday, but it's going to be a 90 minutes attempt you should find time for. That's the difference. Let me just go back to the calendar over here. You can see, for example, for your written test, number one, is scheduled on the Friday of October 1st meaning that during, uh, on October 1st, on that day, between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m., you need to find a 20 minutes window to complete the test. On the other hand, for your programming test number one, it will, be, uh, it is, uh, it will take place on the Friday of October 8th. On that day, you're gonna spend uh, between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. You're going to find a, a 90 minutes window to complete your programming test one, one attempt only. Okay, guys, you said, okay, yeah. Any, uh, anything that's not clear about the uh, programming test and written test? Sorry, Professor, can I ask you one question? Yes, uh, just before, yes, I'll be happy to, just give me one moment. So from Zen on the chat, all our tests will take place on Friday. Yes, that's correct. The only difference is written tests will take for 20 minutes. Programming test will take for 90 minutes. And your question, please. Uh, yes, Professor. So for the written test, the questions are going to be MCQ based or it's going to be short question and answer? Good question, good question. The question was, let me go back to my iPad notes. 
for the written test, are they going to be multiple choice for sure? I would say at least 70% of the uh, written test will be uh, multiple choice, okay? On the other hand, uh, the remaining 30%, if they have to be short answer, like a written question, uh, like, like you have to type some response. In, if that's the case, I will let you know beforehand to, to, so you can get prepared. Otherwise- I see you're lagging. Yeah, we couldn't uh, hear the 30%. Okay, the 30%, thank you. The 30% over here is going to be about some question that require your written response. It's gone again. <laughs> it doesn't like this part of it. Okay, so 30% is going to be about the uh, some question that require your short answer. Okay, M maximum 30%, but the majority is going to be multiple choice. But before every written test, I will let you know if there will be any written question, I will let you know, okay? All right, uh, is that okay for the written test? About the question time? Okay, so guys, yeah. I do appreciate your patience. Uh, it's really annoying that I'm lagging, but nothing I can do for now, all right? I'll try to res uh, restart my router. After the uh, after the session, what's going to be the format for the programming tests? What's going to be the format for the programming? Tests? Yeah. yeah, good question. Uh, I'm lagging again. What's the uh, format for the programming question? Um, you know what? I would say for that one. Uh, uh, briefly speaking, you will be given some starter projects, uh, like a Java projects, where you will have uh, a list of JUnit test cases, and then We're lagging again. We I'm lagging again. again. All right. Okay. So for programming test, for programming test, what's going to happen is you will be given some empty Java projects to start with. And the Java project actually contains some uh, JUnit test cases. And for the JUnit test cases, you will have to actually figure out the classes and methods that you have to program in, right? And this one, specifically, I'll refer you to this notes, which will be covered by part two of your tutorial videos. I'll just mention that to you. And you can see in the lectures page, we got inferring classes and methods from JUnit test cases. So this is the background information you will need. Okay. Okay, my- uh, Can you please repeat the last part? You're lagging. I'm lagging again. All right, no problem. So uh, which part are you missing? It's about the programming test. That part is missing. Hello? So which part are you missing? The whole programming test part is missing. Oh, okay. So, okay, let me just try to have a new, okay. Programming test. Okay, programming task over here. Okay, you will be given some starter projects under which you will have uh, several packages in Java. One is called JUnit tests. And inside you got a, a, ser uh, a series of uh, JUnit test cases. And then you will get a model package as well. That one is simply just I think he has to do a new meeting. Uh, we can't hear you. Muted, professor. 
Yeah, you're muted. Oh, is that, is that a new meeting? Yeah, how about now? No, it's the same oh. meeting. Oh, it's the same meeting. Oh. How about now? Can you hear lagging. me? Lagging or you can hear me? Yeah. It, yeah. It, it's still, it's still, still lagging. lagging. It's still lagging. Yeah. It's still lagging. Wow. Okay. Is, is it better now? How about now? Better? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now okay. it's fine. Okay. Okay. Partly, yeah. Yeah. Let's uh, get it through. All right. But feel free to let me know if you miss any part. Uh, for programming tests, okay. You will be given a starter projects, and then you will get JUnit test cases. And then from the JUnit test cases, you have to figure out what classes and methods you have to implement to get all the it's test cases. Again, right? Yeah, it's like again. Lagging Can again? For the best yeah. 10 seconds. Yeah. I wonder if there's anything I can do. Um, if there's anything I can do. Um, Okay, can we just try this very quickly? I might be able to connect to a slightly different network that might actually help. Why don't we try? Okay. Um, I will uh, switch the network uh, and then I'll end uh, just, um, I, may, I may just reconnect and then we'll, we'll see, uh, we'll see you again. Okay, just uh, reconnect. Let me try okay. to change a different network. All right. Okay, thank you. Okay. So guys, how about now? So far, it seems yeah, fine. Yeah, it seems fine. It's fine. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Still fine, right? Okay. Let's try to see how this might work. All right. Programming test. What's going to happen is you will be given a starter projects. And then you will get at least two packages. One is called JUnit tests. The other one is called model. The JUnit test package contains a, a number of test cases. And then you had to figure out exactly what to implement under the model package. That's the big picture. And you are given a written notes. Uh, yeah, I'm going to about to share my screen. Yes. Uh, OK, here. So start a projects and JUnit tests. You got test cases. And you have to infer uh, test case, uh, infer the classes and methods under the model. So this is why one of the written notes that you will have to study is uh, this guy here, right? I already mentioned that in the part zero, uh, I mean, the part one tutorial for this week. Okay. Okay. Let me just uh, still open the chat. Okay, good. Okay, that's about the original question about programming test. Okay, let me go back to the syllabus to see if you got. All right, guys, any question about a calendar over here? Any question? So far, so good. Okay. Professor? Yes. Can you please make that window for the exams up to 24 hours? Because that will really, really help the international students. Mm. Okay, you know, so the question was, can I increase the length of the window for the test, right? That's what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Okay. From 12 um, hours to 24. Okay. You know what? I, I, heard, I hear you. Uh, let me consider it and then I will confirm. I'm willing to consider. Thank you very much. Okay, okay. Thank okay. you. Okay, no problem. Okay, I hear you. Okay. <laughs> And Professor, can you go over a little bit about the program test? Because it was just cutting and cutting out and, okay, and no, no you problem. didn't share the screen. So Absolutely. I was still quite confused. No problem. No problem. Thank you so much. No problem, guys. I really appreciate your patience. Uh, I've been at York for this is my fifth year. This is only happening the first time, you know. Anyway, okay, about the programming test. What's gonna happen is you will be given some starter projects and the start, starter project only contains the JUnit test cases for you to uh, read and also infer all the required classes and methods. And then you're gonna put them into the model package yourself. So you're basically developing from scratch. 
And then once you get all the classes and methods in place, you're going to make sure you pass all the test cases. That's the format for the programming test. And this is why you will need to study uh, this particular notes for, uh, so let me just show you again. If you go to the lectures page over here, and then if you go to uh, here under written notes and go to infer classes and methods from GUnit test cases, I gave you one complete example over there. So better? So is it clear to you? Yes, thank you so much. Okay, no problem. And from Jared and John, will we be receiving practice tests to prepare us? Yes, you will be. For every uh, programming test, I will try to give you at least one week uh, in advance, some practice test, and also I'll give you precise instruction about what you, what you can expect. So you don't need to worry. Okay. Okay, good. Let me now go back to uh, the syllabus. Guys, let me just call one more time. Do you have any more question about the uh, reading the calendar? Any question here? Good, okay. Let me go further. Uh, after the calendar, uh, I think uh, just about the submission time, okay. Uh, let me talk about lab submission. So usually it will be released on a Friday, for example, it will be by 5 p.m. I will release the lab, okay? Just uh, some deadline to impose on myself, okay? And also the due time, the due dates is going to be by 2 p.m. Because typically you will be given uh, two weeks for the lab. So I'm just making the final submission deadline to be 2 p.m. So that'll be very helpful on myself to also start grading as well. So that's going to be 2 p.m. But it will be spelled out exact, uh, precisely on your lab instruction, right? And for the uh, programming test and also written test, I already explained that uh, earlier, but I will consider to maybe for this window here, rather than 12 hours, should I increase that to 24? I cannot promise anything, but I, I will definitely consider. Okay, let me consider that. And then I will let you know what my decision might be. Okay. Okay. And then uh, I already go over this uh, schedule over here. Okay. So starting from next Wednesday, you will get your first Q&A session about the uh, review tutorial part one. Okay. Wednesday and Thursday, you can attend any or both of them if you wish. Okay, guys, so here the final part for the syllabus is about the uh, weekly lecture topics, okay? So these are more or less stable, but I, I still want to maintain some flexibility. I might swap any topics uh, if I need to. I'm still recording the videos myself. So, but at least I'll give you some idea what we're gonna cover. But at least for week number one and week number two, we are going to focus on reviewing uh, what I think you should know from the first year. If you uh, if you believe something you you what you didn't learn, maybe from your first year from another course or instructor, please try to catch up right now. That's why I'm doing this uh, review in the first two weeks, so everybody can be uh, brought to the uh, same speed starting from week three. That's my hope. Any question about the syllabus before I switch back to the slides? Any questions about the syllabus? Okay, good. Seems like the connection is okay now. Seems like. Okay, we just went over the course syllabus. And uh, for those of you who might need accommodation, uh, if you got some university letters, uh, please get in touch with me. You need to send me an email to let me know. So I will arrange that accordingly. Okay, just for those of you who need it, okay. All right, very quickly about adapting yourself to the second year. Okay, uh, I think uh, if you're, uh, since this mainly for section B, so I think what you did was we, we, we were trying to do a little bit of visualization on physical devices. Like uh, you're developing some Java program, put it into the framework for Android, you can see uh, some uh, tablet visual effects on the screen. That's what basically what you did in the first year. And of course you might have done some testing either using some console tester. So for those of you who took uh, 1022 with me, for example, you, you can see some uh, effects on the console output system the out of print line. And more usefully, you also saw some JUnit test cases in your 1022, okay? But if you didn't take it with me, that's okay. So, but I'm just telling you JUnit test cases re is really the way to go forward uh, for subsequent years. So what a real software developer will actually typically work is like this. So they have the programming problems explained in a way 
that's kind, kind of abstract. So they will only be given the API telling you what should be the signature, uh, what should be the headers. Should it be an accessor returning some value? Or should it be a mutator returning void? And what should be the parameters, input list, the method should take? That's what you'll be given. And then there will be some use cases, like how the method are supposed to be called, in which case JUnit test cases will be a very common way for specifying this. It's precise. And then you should also maintain a set of test cases. And every time you make a small change to your software, you should really rerun all the test cases. It's something called regression testing, which I'll mention, uh, I'll try to emphasize again, maybe in the later lecture video. Okay, but that's basically, I want to just give you some preparation about how you should really switch the mindset from first year to the second year. From first year, you maybe you have been relying on much visual effects on the tablets or maybe on the console, but for the second year, you want to get used to just using the JUnit test cases. That's the way to go, right? You want to be able to think abstractly, and then that's something I will try to give you as many examples as I can in the lectures. One example would be, how do you do interviews at Google? If you go there, you will see the interviewee was actually asked questions and then to present their solution on a whiteboard. So that's actually how you uh, can uh, train your abstract, uh, abstract thinking skills. And for those of you, uh, all of you will be taking 2011 at some point later. So that'll be the uh, data structure course. That one will, I will try to emphasize even more about your abstract, uh, abstract thinking ability. Okay, but starting from this course, I'll try to emphasize some. So what is this course about? I already mentioned about a course learning outcomes. I already mentioned about a, a weekly uh, topics, but just over the big picture, you want to solve problems, really about problem solving, okay? So you want to, you want to keep your procedural programming basics. You want to be able to do step-by-step -step instructions that's going to be executed by the computer using uh, variable assignments, if conditionals, and also loops. So those are all the procedural basics you pick up from the uh, first year, okay? But now we want to add more advanced stuff into it. How would you arrange uh, different methods and different classes together? So now we talk about architecture. Architecture is really about how you organize different classes, different methods together. Specifically in this course, we're gonna talk about inheritance after, after the reading week. So that's really the new bits you have to, uh, you have to pick up from this course. And of course, all the solutions that we're gonna require in this course is gonna be expressed in Java, right? Some quick study tips, uh, that this will be the final slides. So I would say, uh, actually the second last slide. You wanna plan a steady graduate study because uh, I re record uh, pre-recorded lectures uh, every week. So you will get more than a week to actually uh, finish watching all the videos. So you gotta plan your time. Maybe watch for about 20 to 30 minutes a day at least. Right? Don't try to really watch all the three hours in a weekend. That may not be the way to go. And for the optional Q&A sessions, I would say uh, you might choose to only take one or you might uh, choose to take uh, both of them or you might just uh, choose to take uh, none. It's kind of completely up to you, okay? Ask, always ask questions in, in, uh, in, all, in every possible mean. And you can also take notes uh, as you go through the lecture videos. I think uh, later on when you study for the comprehensive exam, that will definitely help. You can see where you might struggle from before. So now when you review it, it'll be much easier for you to uh, get through. Uh, some very quick general tips about studying computer science. This is also something I mentioned to my uh, students, which might be you back in 1022. I think this sentence is really important to do well. Inspiration is more important than perspiration. Perspiration here means uh, sweat and about doing hard work. Doing hard work is definitely necessary for, for you to actually succeed, but it may not be sufficient. It's uh, necessary, but not sufficient. So inspiration is really like an aha moment for you. So for you to really truly understand the topics, you have to work hard first. And then you want to get to a point that you truly understand how everything works together. So that's about inspiration, right? How do you get to inspiration? You have to work hard first. And then uh, you don't want to be too satisfied just by uh, working hard, of course. You want to really make sure you're not just really repeating uh, routine tasks. You want to make sure you're really on, uh, on top of the uh, concepts. Okay, uh, you want to master the grounding stuff, like uh, all the basic stuff I cover in the lecture, and also you want to stay on top of what's being taught, right? 
And uh, you want to go beyond the lecture. So this, again, is optional. Uh, there's no way I can force you to do it. But for those of you who might be interested, you can check out these two sites. One is called Coding Bed, which I recommended to uh, my 1022 students in the winter. So they got actually uh, many practice questions for you uh, to, to actually do, especially for recursion. And then for Lead Code, they also got many uh, free resources there for you to uh, check out as well. So that's, these are just examples. My point is you want to go beyond uh, what's given to you just to find some resources for you to learn. And be curious about uh, why things work the way they do or things don't really work that way. You want to be curious, right? Always reflect. Uh, whenever you reflect on the lecture materials, but you're really stuck at some point to connect all the dots together, you can really drop by my office hour or during the Q&A. So I'll try to clarify. All right, that's about it. Yeah, so I'm glad we actually got uh, to this point. Uh, any qu question? about the, how the course is gonna be run. Any question, anything? You guys, uh, you have been hearing me, uh, hearing me okay, right? I hope. Oh uh, yeah, we can hear you. Okay, okay. <laughs> you'll be embarrassing, hilarious. If <laughs> somebody just couldn't hear me in the past 30 minutes. <laughs> okay, good, all right. Yeah, guys, I really appreciate your patience today. Uh, I don't know what happened, but I'm glad uh, you guys uh, were patient with me. Um, thank you. Any, uh, you know, you know, we still got 50 minutes uh, officially. Do you have any more questions you want me to clarify about the course? Let me see. Uh, I got one more quick question. Yes, please go ahead. So I, I think also someone asked in the chat. So. Uh, uh, but so basically, section B and E are yep. like do not really matter matter that much, right? In terms of like submitting our labs or uh, doing written test or yep. doing lab uh lab test programming test. Mm -hmm. Yes, you're right. So for section B, uh, let me just refer you. To, yeah, good question. So the question was really about: Is there any difference between section B and section E? Since it's taught by the same instructor, me, so there's really no difference. The labs will be exactly the same uh, between the two sections. The written tests and the programming tests, you might receive different version from other fellow students in the other section, but they will be ensured to be at the same level of difficulty. So you can think about, it uh, doesn't really matter which section you are enrolled in, they are the same. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. All right, very good. We got some question here from um, from the uh, uh, chat. Okay, so this is a private message, so I wouldn't mention the student name then. If we have accommodation, we have one accommodation per class, right? So I think uh, uh, on your accommodation letter, you will actually specify to say how much extra time you might have for a test uh, or, uh, for, or for the exam. So I would say the best way to do, send me an email and then maybe attach the PDF of your letter so I can work from there. Okay, that's what I would suggest. Question here, uh, I would like to reconfirm with you, sure. Our lecture sessions are those videos you post, correct? We got pre-recorded lectures every week. And then Q&A sessions are live Zoom sessions, that's correct, every Wednesday and Thursday, starting from next week. Uh, professor, I had a question. Yeah. Um, yeah, just to confirm, our uh, lab submissions are through the ECS website, right? Uh, to be more, yeah, that's correct. To be more precise, it will be the web submit uh, interface. So if you go to your lab zero part one uh, PDF, there is a link over there for you to click. If you click on that, it will prompt you for your ECS login, in which case, uh, if you don't have a one, you should really activate one right away. And then you can log in and then submit. That's how you submit, yes. Perfect, thank you. Good. Okay, let me see. Uh, okay, another private message here. Coming from the first year class to this, I feel that it's a huge jump. Is the first two weeks intended to get us more comfortable? Yes, indeed. Uh, I would say I don't really want to give uh, my students from 10, uh, 1022 back in the winter too much advantage. Oh, uh, I, want, I want every student to really start in the same ground, maybe starting from week three. So I would say for those of you who really find you may not have a very stable uh, foundation from the first year, that's okay. Now is a fresh start. 
make use of the first two weeks to really catch up all the foundation you're supposed to learn in the first year. Of course, you may not learn everything you're supposed to, but at least you make some progress. And if you got any concern about, uh, you're not too sure how to uh, get through a certain concept that's basic, get in touch with me. I'm willing to speak to you in person, okay? When will, when will the pre-recorded lectures be posted? According to the calendar, uh, for week number one and week number two, they will, uh, the, uh, the tutorial video will be released on Wednesday, but that's a kind of exception. Starting from week number three, they will be released on Monday, typically. If I can release on Sunday, I'll do that, but Monday the latest. All right. Okay, uh, okay, uh, let me see. Uh, so, uh, okay, let's, so we can no longer use the SSH submission method uh, from Lucas. Okay, so I think uh, I thought about using the SSH uh, mechanism, but I don't, I don't think we need it. So I would say the best way for you to submit will be just web submit. You just uh, go to web interface using the link and then browse to the file that you want to, uh, want to submit, just submit it, right? Okay, another private message here. So for the pre-recorded uh, pre videos, you will post them at the beginning of each week. Yes, mon uh, starting from week three, that's correct, Monday. Starting from week three, that's correct. And so we can prepare our question for Wednesday and Thursday lecture in the next week, right? To be more precise here, you can see after week three lecture is, has been re uh, posted over here on Monday, the Q&A only happened the next week over here. So you got slightly more than one week uh, for you to study. Okay, so let's see, but when will the pre-recorded lecture be uploaded Monday? Okay, are there any resources to help catch up from last year? So in terms of catching up, right? Let me just mention that um, if you actually uh, start with this intro video, I also mentioned that, but let me just repeat. Repetition might be nice sometimes. There are two ways for you to catch up, I think, uh, for the two weeks. Number one, you are required to actually study the review tutorial series, number one. Number two, you can also go to the tutorial videos I created for 1022 in the winter. If you go there, you will see the weekly breakdown. So this cover the basic in Java from scratch, starting from elementary programming all the way up to OOP, right? So that these are the two resources you can catch up, okay? But you can also speak to me if you got any concern. Okay, so let's say, uh... Yeah, so I would say for those of you who actually took, uh, let's say 1022, not, not with me, maybe in the summer, I would say, yeah, presumably that your instructor should have covered more or less the same topics. But I would say the best way to check is to make sure you go, go through in, uh, thoroughly the review tutorials for week one and week two and make sure everything I said uh, in the tutorial videos makes sense to you. Then you should be okay to go on to the uh, starting from the third week. That would be my advice. Are the tests sequential? I'm not too sure what you meant by sequential. So, uh, Jayant, can you clarify what do you mean by sequential? Yeah, uh, some tests have been like, uh, you can't see the next question unless you do the current one. Oh, okay, go okay, back. got it, got it, got it. Uh, you're, you're talking about written tests specifically, right? Not the programming uh, test. Anyone. Okay, so I think for the written test, it's not going to be sequential. So if you go from question one to question two, and then to question three, you can still go back to the earlier question. That's okay, it's not sequential. Is it the same for the programming one as well? Uh, for programming tests, it's not, it, uh, it will just be given a single big question to, to solve, to program. So it doesn't matter if that's sequential or not. Okay, thank you. Good. Okay, so nothing on Monday other than lab session. Yes, that's correct. So for, according to the schedule, I mean, just uh, since you ask. So for next Monday, for example, you can see, uh, let me see the schedule here, yeah. So starting from already today, right? So for this week, you can already, uh, we don't have any lab session this week, by the way, we don't have, there's no TA this week. Starting from next Monday, you can start attending the TA session, yes. 
you oh some someone seems to have forgotten about the excuse me someone seems to have forgotten about the password for the remote lab how can you log in again for this course um i would suggest send me an email telling me uh, that you forgot about your password not sure how to reset it and i will forward your inquiry to our tech team for the department okay send me an email are the tutorial videos essentially walking us uh, through lab zero? That's correct. For lab zero, part one and part two, uh, you, you're doing, uh, you, basically the main thing you're doing is just uh, to watch the tutorial, type, uh, type out the code together with me and make sure you understand every single detail I said in the video. That's basically your job, all right? Yeah, so I think you can reset a password in ECS website. You can give it a try, maybe go back to where you activated your, um, ECS account, you can see the link uh, in lab zero part one instruction. Maybe there's a link for you to reset a password. You can give it a try. If it doesn't work, you can get back to me. All videos are going to be uploaded. You mean the Q&A videos, right? Yes, they will be uploaded. And I think for today, <laughs> unfortunately, it's a bit, uh, you know, uh, cut off and cut off and cut off. I'll try to see, I'll post something. But I think hopefully tomorrow is going to be a smooth session. I'll post tomorrow's recording as well, so you can refer to it. But hopefully you got all the questions answered, at least. Um, professor? Oh, sorry, just, uh, I'll get back to you. Just give me one moment, sorry. So another question, a private message. Also, most labs are guided by myself. All the labs are designed by myself. All the instructions are written by me. But in terms of tutorial videos, I think starting from your lab number one, I may not record that long videos for you anymore. So what I can do is I will try to see how everybody's doing, maybe based on the forum, based on the Q&A. If there's really a need for me to create something supplementary, I'll do that. But you definitely don't need to watch like a long tutorial videos for every week, only for the first two weeks. Starting from week number three, you only need to watch the videos for lectures. Yes, please, question. Oh yeah. So um, just just to clarify, so the yes. you know the lab that is a part of our um, schedule. Yeah. Obviously, the labs differ by different section and all that. So labs are one um, non mandatory and two virtual and three just treated as a Q and A session and not like a it's not like a, we do anything specific during those That's correct. times. It's That's correct. Okay. To be more uh, to let me add a little bit more to it. That means. You, you are not required to show up in the lab to get anything graded. I so see. labs are only for your benefits. If you really find that you need to speak to a TA, you go to the lab session. If you find a need to speak to my uh, to me in person, you go to my office hour. So that's the plan. Yeah. Right, so there's nothing specific that we're doing in, a, in the lab is just like an additional Q and A session. Is that that's correct, okay, precisely. That's correct. Thank you. Good. All right, so the lecture, okay, so the lecture Q&A, uh, okay, uh, it, it is going to be with you. Uh, yeah, so the Q&A, uh, the, the lecture Q&A, these two will be held by myself, yes. It's going to be one-on-one -on -one question. Okay, I think for the Q&A, what's going to happen is I'm going to go over all the questions that have been posted on the Google Doc, which I showed you already, right? For every week, you will be given the link to some Google Doc for you to post questions. For example, for week number one, you will see post your question in this, uh, in this document. You can, you can do that. So I'm gonna answer all the questions, first of all, on the Google Doc. If there's any additional question, I'm gonna take it. But of course, the rest of the group can also listen to. So it's, it's not exactly one-on-one. -on -one. It's more like a moderated discussion session, if you like, okay? Okay, guys, I think, uh, yeah, thank you for the kind words uh, in a uh, private message. I would say, I can tell you that uh, for this year, this is kind of like my fourth time uh, teaching uh, 2030. All the earlier three times I taught before the pandemic, so that was like a face-to-face -to, -face to your fellow students. So this year, I decided that uh, I just want everybody to really start in the same ground, starting from week three. That's why I try to create the review tutorial series. So I would say really spend the time uh, if you really fell behind uh, in learning from the first year, please get in touch with me as soon as possible. So I can might I might be able to give you some extra materials to study. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's see. Ah. Okay. Good. So this one here. Um, so the tutorial video you saw 
over here, right? If you click on that, this one is part one uh, for week one. For week number two, you will get part two. I'm still recording part two, but it will be available by the coming Wednesday, by next Wednesday, okay? So whatever that's been posted so far is only for this week. So you have, including today, you got seven days uh, to finish them. So I would say if you can arrange your time to watch between one or two, uh, videos, it should be okay. I try to put every video to be about 20 minutes or so, right? And office hour is for one-on-one -on -one question. Yes, my office hour will be starting from today. So if you like, you can definitely drop by. Go to my 2030, uh, go to the 2030 website on the top. You can click here to my, uh, to my Zoom office starting from 3 p.m. What is my email address? Good. So if you go to my homepage, Right, and then you will see here, uh, Jackie at ecs.yorku.ca. That's my email. All right, guys, I believe I cover everything on the chat. And do you have any more? We got one more minute. I'm willing to take more questions if you have. All right, hearing none. Thank you so much for coming. And then you now pretty much know what to do. I would say if you got any doubts about how things should really move, always, uh, it, always it doesn't hurt to ask, always, just ask, all right? Guys, I'll see you very soon, hopefully all of you in the Q&A next Wednesday, okay? Guys, take care, bye-bye.